Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Engineer Ramaz al the uh, Information Communication Technology and Digital Transformation Expert. Engineer bar thank you very much for joining us this evening. My pleasure to be here today. Our oh, pleasure, sir. First of all, before we start talking about the, the technology and ICT uh, and the ICT efforts exerted, what about the first sort of measures that were taken recently uh, in terms of raising the minimum wage for uh, government employees and the pensioners starting from March this month? How would you rate such a decision in terms of alleviating or the, the suffering or uh, any sort of uh, hardships by the Egyptian citizens, especially during a time of high inflation? Yeah, um, uh, you know, this kind of, of issue is actually is not only in Egypt, it's mm -hmm. became globally now that the, the economy is getting uh, really uh, suffering from a lot of factors. So Egypt specifically has been suffering for the past three, four months about um, many issues externally and internally. That's made the government trying to take such decisions mm -hmm. in terms of how to balance between the wages and pensions and the cost of the products and goods in the markets. Mm -hmm. This kind of gap has really become very huge in the past three, four months. That's why uh, they took a lot of decisions to increase the wages mm -hmm. to the level that can afford the cost of the goods uh, uh, in the market. But again, controlling is very important. That's why the government is starting a lot of uh, hard, hard decisions, let me say, mm -hmm. to control the market and make sure the traders follow the instructions and follow all the uh, recommendation comes from the government at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot control that 100%, but at least we need to have the strategic goods on place with mm -hmm. affordable, uh, affordable cost to the old uh, citizen of Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, the Forex exchange rate the challenge at making this kind of gap. That's why I think after the uh, serious invest happened in Egypt and Russell Hekma and some other investor come on board mm -hmm. that make a liquidity of the uh, Forex uh, exchange rate became more stable and we even uh, blocked all the black market and this kind of issue that we are suffering from. So all of that it would be impacted gradually during this month and I can, I can see the uh, Prime Minister has mentioned even today that uh, the prices will be decreased gradually uh, starting from 10 percent, 20 percent, even up to 30 percent by the mm -hmm. end of the month. So I can see and I feel a lot of decisions that really impacting the market costs yes. nowadays. Yeah. Well, Engineer Parui now when we talk about raising the minimum wages and including uh, the Kefal and Karama, for instance, yeah. programs and allocating 180 billion pounds. Now, all of these things, all the, the, the wages and the salaries, now they're being dispersed with the Mesa uh, card and, uh, or the Misa card. Misa card. Um, now, this is really within the domain of the ICT. Correct. sector and it's all part of the digital transformation that the country has been going through. How far do you feel that the ICT sector has really, I mean the kind of progress it really is taking since four years ago for instance up until now, how far or how developed is the ICT sector in, in at least dealing with these sort of transactions because we're talking about millions and millions of people having to deal, th uh, to deal with such a, a digital uh, transformation. I agree with you. Like, like you mentioned, uh, uh, the government has started this kind of project long time ago, let's say four or five years from now. Mm -hmm. we, did, we started this journey of digital transformation uh, since four years ago of how to create the data center that accumulates all the information from the, all the ministries and all the governmental locations and make sure this data has been analyzed perfectly to take the right decisions. Like you mentioned, for example, Haya um, uh, Karima, for example, mm -hmm. and this kind of, of uh, initiative actions from the government, if they don't have the proper information about the real people that need this kind of uh, uh, support, mm -hmm. then uh, it needs more data and more database centers. That's why I came on board the main data centers in the new capital that mm -hmm. is accumulating all the information from the old ministries, then analyze it, then take decisions of where we can support them, how can we support them, what is the percentage we need to support them. All of these uh, uh, numbers and analysis must come through 
a proper uh, data uh, collections comes through the digital transformation actions. Mm -hmm. Another part of the digital transformation which is giving service to the citizen. Uh, as you see now, and I can feel service and, and, and normal service to the, to the citizen now has become more easy. There's no paperwork anymore. Yes. So you can have a lot of um, action happening in the gate of the government by the website. You can just log in. You have unique number. Then you can submit your application for uh, many, many of the service can be done now uh, online services, which mm -hmm. is really have a good impact. Also, we are following up what next in the world. We're actually hosting a lot of events in the ICT domain. The Ministry of uh, ICT is actually doing a lot of efforts in that side and also in the education part mm -hmm. for the college and a lot of uh, uh, college that have artificial intelligence uh, uh, department just only uh, making sure the new generation have uh, ability to deal with this uh, kind of new language like artificial intelligence, machine learning and, and, and so on. So um, I believe we are uh, working towards 23 vision for Egypt. We are working hard to do that and I believe still we have a lot of steps to do and reach the vision that we have. Yes. Well, let's take it step by step. Yeah. You've mentioned the data collection process now and using it to really uh, help make better decisions, to target the right people, uh, the money would go for the right people, the, the, the right families that really are in need uh, for the extra money. But what, what has been the hardest part? Is it the collection of data being detailed and specific and accurate? Or is it the, the actual collection of the data in general because a lot of the stuff, I mean, we're talking about many different ministries, yeah. we're talking about a lot of papers, a lot Paperwork. of unclear sort of data. Correct. How has this transformation been and how hard has it been translating the data that is being collected because not all of it has been definitely detailed and specific? Uh, that, that's a good question. Actually, this is a, the main question that uh, for any organization or any even state mm -hmm. uh, asking themselves before uh, going to the journey of the uh, digital transformation. The major challenge that was the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You need to have a proper infrastructure that allow you to start the journey of the digital transformation. And that's what Egypt has started to do by running fiber connections everywhere. They, are, they have already terminals at each government office, they, they started to do a proper infrastructure across the state mm -hmm. to make sure that the connectivity and the infrastructure of the servers, the networking, that's on place. Mm -hmm. Then after this infrastructure, we go for the next level of converting the traditional data, which is a paperwork and this kind of uh, traditional uh, employment work mm -hmm. to be digitalized in that servers. And also we spend a lot of efforts in that side of scanning papers and changing this one, bringing new platforms mm -hmm. that allow the uh, empl employees actually to enter this own data and instead of the paperwork and this kind of traditional stamp to e-signatures. So there's a lot of process happening to convert this traditional data mm -hmm. to uh, uh, digital data, let me say. Then after this process, which we, we are running right now, is how to process this data mm -hmm. to be a real a clean data that can be used for a proper decision in the future mm -hmm. and even for the current one and that's what we are actually work, working on at the moment and most of the uh, ministries is actually taking this information to the analysis level. Um, uh, definitely we are partner with uh, top uh, companies that are doing this kind of, uh, of technology mm -hmm. uh, of the business intelligence and also uh, data analysis um, uh, that make sure that all this kind of software that is on place that can make this decision more easy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last section, which say this, after taking decisions, what is the follow-up of those decisions? What is the impact after taking decisions? Mm -hmm. Is it the right time, right place, or we need kind of modification? So it's a continuous process. It must start by the infrastructure level and ending by uh, follow-up and that analysis the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, I think not only Egypt is doing that, that the whole world now coming to that part. Uh, we are now, let me say, uh, confident that in the map of the uh, uh, digital transformation journey in the world mm -hmm. and we're still investing in that side and I can see a lot of efforts really happening in an ICT minister is doing that uh, uh, step by step and making sure the major uh, uh, ministries have this kind of department. Mm -hmm. I want to even add something that's really important that at each ministry we have a specific department that's responsible of the digital transformation, explaining mm -hmm. this
to the whole uh, employees and, and starting training them of how to deal with this new uh, technology and new eras. Yeah. So it really also is adding a really value at mm -hmm. each of the universities. Well, you've mentioned the governmental services. Now, it started off in 2020 by about 30 full services, and now we've reached uh, 168 by August 2023. So now you can get more done digitally, uh, governmental services, obviously, and now we're also talking about including about half a million in, uh, families from the Kefal and Karama and also the Decent Life Initiative. Now, not everybody is uh, technology savvy yeah. and a lot of the people who deal with these services are maybe are illiterate or uh, a lot of them are the elderly so they're not really used to, I mean they already have issues dealing with their smartphones so Correct. let alone dealing with other governmental services uh, and digital uh, services. Correct. So is this the responsibility of the government to try and have them more uh, friendly, user friendly for the elderly or is it about raising awareness? Do you have to deal with a lot of issues that result for not really knowing how to best use or make the best use of these digital services? Um, in my opinion, is 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 just like a double responsibility. It's coming from the government, and it's also coming from the society and the mm -hmm. person as himself. So the government is responsible to make it, uh, like I said, a friendly, easy uh, experience, and it's make it more affordable uh, in, in in terms of using, and also it's easy access is anywhere. I don't need to spend more time and more efforts to do something. Should uh, be done in in very fast, and that's what. Uh, the government is trying to do by providing internet access everywhere. Uh, they are starting to upgrade all the network infrastructure with also um, associated with a lot of things and also cooperating with a mobile operator here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So that's from the government side and from the society and the person itself. You need to update yourself, uh, whatever you are working, whatever you are in the environment. We saw that many times uh, during the technology evolution. Yes. So starting from 2G networks, mm -hmm. we're just making call and messages and people are just uh, answering the phones. Now starting to have more browsing data. So we saw that people are struggling, mm -hmm. learning new things, but at the end of the day, they are learning. And if there's only option to learn, they will learn. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, uh, it's not became luxury anymore. It's, it's kind of mandatory things mm -hmm. you need to teach yourself. We saw that even in all small traders, they can now transfer money, they can uh, deal with some platforms, e-payment. So all of this kind of stuff is also responsible by the person himself. He, you should be willing to learn something new. Uh, you should be learning uh, something that uh, uh, will be adding value for you and for your business and even for your uh, career, either in the government side or in the private sector. Yes. So it's a double responsibility be between the uh, government mm -hmm. and the society as well. When we talk about Tekefon Karama, for instance, now the initiative actually added, I mean, the government has added about a, one million families uh, for Tekefon Karama, and the cost of it is, is divided between the government and the NGOs, uh, non-governmental organizations. Correct. Now, it's three billion pounds by the government to support about half a million families, and two and a half to three billion uh, by the NGOs to support 400,000 to 500,000 families as well. So it really sheds, I mean, let's try and focus on the NGOs or the private sector's involvement, especially as well within the ICT uh, sector. Yeah. You've mentioned that the, the ministry works with uh, a lot of prestigious ICT yeah. companies. Now, where does the ICT's cooperation with the private sector begin and where does it end? How much of a responsibility is it f laid upon the, the private sector as well? Uh, private sector is, is one of the key um, uh, tools that need to be used uh, nowadays for maintaining uh, the economy everywhere in the world, not only in Egypt. That's why the, uh, the government is all the time uh, trying to support them to come on board and, and trying to uh, do more efforts in that side. Mm -hmm. in, in, in terms of the ICT domain, um, there is a lot of things that the private sector can do and is still doing it, 
like providing the internet access, providing um, an easy way to uh, implement such platforms, make life easy for the citizen, like uh, e-payments, for example, like uh, uh, the uh, Takeful and Karama, how can uh, um, uh, make the goods and, and this kind of product reach to the uh, people who really need uh, this kind of service. They also can use the own platform to do such analysis of who the people are really and where they, how can we reach them and such uh, uh, information analysis for that side. So private sector can play a very big role in that uh, side mm -hmm. and also still lead the own efforts on that side. We still need more from them actually to uh, more engagement and more uh, action in, in, in inside of, of, that, uh, of that matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, do you feel that with, I mean, when we talk about SDGs, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, and we talk about the digital age of Egypt and digital transformation and really uh, strengthening and bolstering the ICT sector, we might not be at the highest sort of level internationally comparing, with, uh, mm -hmm. comparing ourselves with many of the uh, <coughs> international communities, developed yeah. countries, but how fast are we moving in terms of trying to narrow the gap between our dependency on uh, ICT mm -hmm. um, compared to other countries? Uh, uh, yeah, th that's that's really one of the things that um, uh, we have like a quarter reports of mm -hmm. to find ourselves where we are in that side. Um, uh, let me tell you uh, that nowadays is is not became a, a series of action to reach your targets. Uh, uh, whatever or whoever can reach uh, a very advanced level if you are quickly doing what's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see a lot of examples in the countries that spend two, three, four years and reach in a very high level of advanced that is not uh, on the top of the countries that is advanced. And that's one of them is really Egypt. If you look at the last four or five years and see the action happened in terms of the infrastructure side, uh, 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 cooperations with a, a huge uh, and super project and an ICT and also uh, uh, penetrate the market of the artificial intelligence of machine learning. So um, I can tell you that we found ourselves in the right direction. It may take some time, which is, is makes sense because you cannot make this kind of transition in, in mm -hmm. such one or two years. Uh, remember also the technology is growing very fast. Um, at each uh, two, three months is something coming new. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the chat GPT, what's happening in artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, at each single week we have new application based and powered by artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, the point here is not just to deploy the technology as it is. You need to study what exactly you need in your society. How can this artificial intelligence or machine learning can help you? And then customize this kind of technology by the right way to help your nation. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's not about uh, a dam uh, um, uh, deployment of technology rather than studying the technology and make sure that the technology is really uh, making a, a real impact in, in your society. Egypt in the map of the uh, digital transformation mm -hmm. journey. Uh, we have been already recognized by a lot of organization in that terms. And still we have vision for 2030. And I believe by 2030, we will live in very, very right rank at that side. That's yes. what we can see. We see our infrastructures and even uh, uh, really in the education level, which I'm really, really very keen about. If you see the new generation now in engineering uh, faculties and other uh, uh, sectors, mm -hmm. they are taking artificial intelligence and machine learning as a part of their own study. Mm -hmm. If you see how many research uh, uh, paper has been shared in the past three, four months from Egypt and universities of Egypt, you will really feel that we are on the right track yes. and at that side. Engineer, but we now We've seen the measures and the initiative decreasing the prices, increasing the minimum uh, wages and salaries and the pensions, and it really tries to deal with uh, the inflation problem yeah. that Egypt is going through along with the rest of the world. Now, is there, is there a role to be played by the information communication technology in order to, as you've mentioned, it is trying to control the prices and monitor the whole process. Is there Correct. a role for the ICT to be able, uh, I mean, to be able to monitor, to be able, I mean, talking about electronic sort of payments or, 
I mean, starting off with multi-billion pounds yeah. transactions within multinational companies to when you go to the groceries uh, and street vendors, really trying to establish some sort of a control. Can the ICT play a role in that? A hundred percent agree. ICT can play a really big role in that. The reason for this is if we, uh, like we say before, if we own the information data, then we can control and monitor and take the right decisions. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, if you look at the traders' network that they are selling uh, goods, like in a free-running mode, which is anybody can just costing the goods or uh, uh, the device and say, this is how it costs. Mm -hmm. Based on what? Why you cost this one uh, by X dollars or X Egyptian pound, for example? Is there any rules to cost this one? How much you're making? How much profit you do? What is the process that you reach this kind of costing? Mm -hmm. So if we agree in a unique cost, for example, in this kind of, of um, let me say, the goods or, or uh, item, mm -hmm. then when the uh, uh, citizen are buying these items, he has already um, a, a reset for, mm -hmm. for that transaction. So if this reset come direct to the data center and showing how much the citizen has uh, got this product is, mm -hmm. comparing with a price list of what is supposed to be, then we can do this kind of controlling mm -hmm. at that side. It will take time, and I think we have already started about this one, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the tax system. Mm -hmm. I think the taxing system now has become uh, electronic, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, it can be monitored everywhere, even if you're a small trader or a big trader. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the next step needs to be done in how you are selling this product and how much mm -hmm. you are selling, so we can get exactly how much profit you do, and this is acceptable or no. Yes. So it's something that we can work on, based mm -hmm. on the information and that analysis, like I said before. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the, foreign, uh, the uh, finance uh, minister has actually uh, talked about uh, commitment to enhancing the wages and salaries for the year 2024. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back.